Hey y'all, welcome back. In this video, we'll be talking about constraints in SQL. So far, we've been using our student data as an example, and we've been doing lots of very interesting things with our student data. But we haven't really talked about whether certain rows have invalid or valid information. For example, our student data is pretty simple. We just have four columns, right? We have the name of the student, their GPA, their major, and we have the year they're in school. Now, because this is data about a real world problem, not just some randomly generated numbers, each of these fields has some kind of logical things you can put in and some kind of logical things that you should not put in. For example, GPA is a really good example. In most universities in the United States, GPA runs between zero and four. So it doesn't really make sense to put anything negative in there or anything higher than four. Another one might be major. We might enforce that we can never have a null value for major because every student should have a major at all times. Year is also a good example. Maybe we want that year has some kind of default value if one isn't provided when you insert a student. Um, something that might make sense is one. Like, if you don't say the explicitly the year of the student you're inserting, we assume it's a first year. So there's a lot of different types of constraints or insertion behaviors that we might want to enforce on any one of these columns. But right now, we don't have any way of enforcing it. One idea is that just let people put whatever they want in there and then periodically just get rid of stuff that doesn't meet the criteria. But that's kind of wasteful. We have to regularly check and we have to remove rows and we might have issues where there's invalid rows um, temporarily that we haven't removed. It, it'll be easier for everyone if we just don't allow those rows to go into the database in the first place. So here's where constraints come in. First, let's see what happens when we don't have constraints. So I'm gonna create the students table fresh with no constraints, just the four columns, name, GPA, major, and year. And we're going to insert four rows in there, each of which will have a problem. The first row, we insert a student called Yoda with a GPA that's above four with physics major year three. That's going to be a problem because the GPA is out of bounds. The second row, we insert another student where it's named Yoda. So let's say we don't want two students with the same exact name because that's going to cause problems for us. The third row is problematic because we have a null value for the major and we said that we don't want that. And the last row is problematic because we don't explicitly give a year. So here we're inserting just for three of the columns, name, GPA, and major. We don't specify the year. So it's going to be null, but we would like it to be one, just by default year one. So I run these and they're all successful. If I select the student data, we see all sorts of problems. The duplicate name, the GPA being too high, the major being null, and the year being null for the student I didn't specify. So let's see if we can do better. I'm going to go through the four major constraints in SQL. There's others, and we'll take a look at some specific ones in future videos. But here's four of the major ones that are used. So we're going to do another one. We're going to create a table called Students Constraints. And it's going to be the same data types and same column names as our students table, except now we're going to add some additional information after each data type of the column. And that's going to specify some constraints on that column. So let's look at the first one. The first one is name, and we're specifying this unique constraint. This says that I can never have two students with the same name in my table. So if I insert a student with a certain name and I try to insert a student later on with the same name, it's going to yell at me and say that's not allowed. So that's good. The next one is a check constraint. So this one's really useful. This basically says that when you insert a new record with, a, with any given GPA, make sure you check and say that GPA has to be less than or equal to 4 and greater than or equal to 0. If it's not in that range, then don't allow that record in. The next one is a not null constraint. So basically, whenever you insert a major, enforce that it's not null. Make sure that that student does have a major when you put them in. And the last one will be year. So if uh, you insert a student and the year is not specified, default, so that's a keyword, default that year to one. Or it's going to assume that's a first year unless you explicitly say something otherwise. And I've used these examples on insertion, but the truth is that the table is always going to maintain these constraints. So if I have a table with valid rows, and I try to update some of the rows such that it's going to violate the constraints. For example, if I try to set the major of some student to null, then it'll also yell at me there. So basically, these constraints give a really easy and handy way for you to basically enforce that there's never any illegal data in your table. So they're really, really powerful in that way. So I'm going to execute this. I created my new table, and we're going to try to execute all of these invalid lines one by one. So the first one, I'm going to try to execute this line, which sets a GPA that's out of bounds. And we get check constraint failed. That's good. We wanted it to fail. The next one is that we're going to try to uh, insert a student with the name Yoda. And this one's actually going to succeed. So 
This one's fine. I inserted a student with the name Yoda, GPA is within bounds, major is specified, and year is specified. What happens when I try to insert another student with the name Yoda? I should get an error, right? Unique constraint failed. Good, because I don't want two students with the name Yoda, so it protected against that. The next one, I'll try to insert a student with a different name, a valid GPA, a valid year, but a null major. That should fail, because I never want the major to be null. Good thing, fails. Not null constraint failed. And the last thing is that I will try to insert a student without specifying their year and hope that the uh, year is going to be set to 1 because of the default constraint. Let's look at what I got. As expected, I just have two rows that successfully made it in. The first one is Yoda 3.5 Physics 3, and the last one is Kylo 3.5 Physics, and the year is 1. Even though I didn't specify it, the default constraint did do its job. So this is a quick look at four of the most used constraints in SQL. And I would say that whenever you're making a table, you as the creator of the table probably have the most understanding of what kind of values are and are not allowed in this table. So go ahead and just set those constraints up front so that people who are um, inserting or updating your table later on who might not have as much knowledge about the table as you will not need to have knowledge about the table because if they try to insert something illegal or update something illegally, it'll just yell at them rather than them getting away with the action and then you have to deal with that later on. So this is Constraints in SQL. Until next time.